Hey everyone, Rob here from Phantom Trading, and today I'm going to be showing you in this short tutorial video how to journal your trades. So, pretty simple video, but you know this is obviously a very important part of trading, especially if you are a, an aspiring trader or you're a professional trader. You should be documenting every single one of your trades that you take in the market. It doesn't matter if you trade stocks, forex, or crypto. Uh, I mean, this template I am going to provide a link to it in the description below. Uh, to make it available for everybody. It is available for free within the Phantom Trading community. So if you're a member, uh, just go to the resources and there is a link to it that you can use to duplicate as a template. Now, this particular tool is built on Notion, um, which is a very popular tool among traders for note-taking, for documenting trades. Um, and the way that I built it, I mean, if you want to build it yourself, you're welcome to do it. It's uh, using a calendar database. So I kind of put this together. It was originally uh, Blackwatch's idea, so credit to him. But I kind of took it and put my own spin on it. Um, so again, so why is it important to document our trades? Obviously, you know whether it's a win, loss, a break, even you should be documenting every single trade. Why? Because we need to reflect on our engagements in the market. Without that, you know we're really like we're, we're essentially driving a car with our eyes closed. Right? We want to have that feedback to see, okay, am I sticking to my plan? Am I following the rules within my plan, right? That's very important. Are the trades that I'm taking valid within my plan or are they invalid? Am I forcing trades? Am I hesitating? You know, all this self-reflection, it is, you know, to some, it's a lot of work. Eventually you build the skill up and it becomes easier, right? As you practice it. Um, but I really think it's an essential uh, skill to have. Without it, you really are flying blind. It's a little dangerous, right? Because then, because then you're just taking trades here and there, not really processing what's happening, right? If we want consistency in the market, we need to be consistent with all of our habits and eliminate as many variables as we can, right? So I'll just show you guys how this one works. Um, again, if you want to use my template, join Phantom. Again, there's going to be a link in the description below that you can uh, click on and then you can duplicate this uh, template and modify it to your liking. So it doesn't matter if you trade the way that we teach in Phantom or maybe you trade a break and retest strategy or even if you trade Fibs or Elliott Waves, it really doesn't matter. I mean, you could trade breakouts in stocks for all I care. It works for that. You just have to modify it a little bit. Uh, anyways, there's nothing wrong with that. I'll quickly show you guys kind of the different templates that I have here. If you ever want to you know, modify it, it's very simple. You click on this little blue arrow on the top right, and you hit these three dots, and you can actually edit the template. So if you trade, you know, say you trade stocks, you could have just a, a straight up uh, template that just says stocks, and you can have like the particular time frames that you enter on, you can essentially customize this to whatever way you want to customize it, right? Now, because I trade primarily Forex and the indices, sometimes gold, I have EU, GU, AU, gold, US 30, and AS100. I also have a few of these other things, including, you know, weekly review, my weekly PL, just so I can keep it, keep track of, you know, how I'm performing for the week, right? So I'll show you guys how to do this. So we'll, we'll create a, a new template here. And all you need to do is click on one of the templates in this list here. So the trade I'm going to show you is an EU trade. As you can see, I've clicked on it and it'll load up all of the different, you know, subheadings for each of the time frames. And I'm going to name this EU-23. So why am I putting it as 23? You guys don't need to do this, but the reason I do it is because I like to kind of keep a collection or essentially collect uh, you know, sample sizes of data. Usually I do like a series of 30 trades. And then I'll kind of reset it every time just to assess, you know, what my strike rate is for the last 30 trades for that sample size of data. Uh, so, yeah, things like my strike rate, my, you know, my P&L, like my net R, my profit factor, things like that. And again, the reason I'm doing that is because I just want to assess, you know, how I'm performing in my uh, within my strategy and my, my trade plan. So we're on the 23rd trade in the series. And, you know, again, I've named it EU. You can name it whatever you want. It really doesn't matter. Um, and the nice thing about this template is a lot of these are automatically calculated. So any of these ones that have a little like equation symbol are just automatically calculated and you'll be able to, you know, enter in things like your R and your percent risk, depending on how much you risk per uh, trade, right? This is a percent of the total equity of your account, by the way. So um, the other nice thing about this, because it is a calendar database, I have a field in here called date and it just automatically populates based on you know where you have it so if i move this to friday the 29th you can see here it automatically updated to friday friday the 29th and same with the outcome as you put in you know whatever your r is 
your plus R's. This is just your risk to reward ratio. So if it's zero, it'll be break even. Anything higher than that will be a win. And anything lower than that should really ever, uh, it should really only ever be negative one, right? Because you, you don't want to be risking, you know, unless you get slipped, which has happened to me too, right? You get slippage in the market. Um, you know, it would be minus two, but it should be minus one. It'll show up as a loss, right? And the other thing that I've done here is the only like data that I actually show within here is just my R. I don't like to focus so much on the money. If you'd like to focus on the dollar amount or you want to add it in here, there's a way that you can do it. I believe you can show properties like so. So say you want to show, you know, the date you can do it. It just makes it a little bit, you know, messier. Um, so I'll take off date risk, but say you wanted to show the, the outcome There you go. There's the outcome and you can show the gain as well here. Right. Um, oh, that's the percent gain. Sorry. Take that off. Um, net profit. This is the one that I was looking for. So there you go. You can actually see like, you know, what you're making or losing on each trade based on the parameters that you have set within it. Um, so we'll take that off. We'll take off net profit. Um, I honestly just have never updated this. So the way that I have it and the way that it will be by default is as if you have one funded prop firm account for hundred K. So essentially, you know, what it does is if you're risking 1%, you're essentially risking $1,000, uh, right? Now, obviously as that account grows, it'll be a little bit off from what it really is. Say you have 130 or like $30,000 in profit, 30% gain. Um, you're obviously risking 1300 per trade. It is going to be a little bit off. That's fine. Now, on the other hand, if you say have uh, three funded accounts, I'm just going to put this to the, the trade example I want to show you guys. Say you have three funded accounts. It's pretty simple. All you need to do is change this number here. Uh, I don't know why it's an exponent, but you can change this to, you know, whatever the account principle is. This is the account principle, this first thing in the actual, or sorry, this first variable within the actual formula. So say you have $300,000 in funding, then there you go. Your net profit for a 10 hour trade risking 1% would be about 31,000. Now for me, I also have this set, this should be 0 0.9. I have it set so that, you know, there's like a theoretical profit split because you're either making 80 to 90% uh, of the gain. The other, you know, 10 to 20% is being given to the prop firm. And, uh, you know, obviously it really depends on the prop firm. So you would put basically the profit split in here. Again, if it's 80%, 2.8. If it's 90, 2.9. If it's a personal account, you can just leave this at one or remove this entirely, but leave it at 0.9. And then because I'm Canadian, I convert this to the rough uh, Canadian dollar conversion from US to Canadian. You can change this to whatever your, you know, your base currency is in your country uh, versus the actual you know, base currency of your account, which most of the time is either euros, pounds or, or uh, US dollars. So for me, I've done that. If you want to remove it, it's fine then this will just be uh, straight US dollars, right? Uh, you could even go as far as, you know, entering uh, whatever the tax is in here. Now, that really depends on whether you're incorporated or not. That's a whole, you know, lesson or video for another day. We won't go into taxes, but, you know, I'm just going to leave this at 1.26 because that converts to Canadian dollars. It makes sense for me. So let's make sure that's right. Okay, good. So that's with, again, that's with a 300K account. If you have 400K in funding, same thing. Look. It's just as easy as setting that to, to that, right? So I'll put it at 300. Actually, I'll leave it at 100,000 for the uh, the template because I think that's a good way to visualize it. Um, and I'll show you guys how I, I document the trade now. So let's go over to Euro dollar. Here is the trade example. So I'll just take a picture of that. Obviously, you mark it up as much as you need to for it to make sense. If you want to annotate it, there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. Uh, I see people do that all the time. You know, they'll annotate, say, you know, entered here, <laughs> just as an, ex as an example. And then I'll press Control Shift S to actually save the image. Alternatively, like that's obviously on Windows. Alternatively on Mac, I'm not sure what the um, the hotkey is. It might be Command Shift S, but you can always look at the uh, different hotkeys here on the top right. If you click on the little uh, camera icon on the top right. So I'm then gonna paste in all of my different time frames. Again, I've marked it out already, so just kind of put it in here, put it in here, right, for each time frame. And again, if you want to customize this, maybe you don't use the 15 minute or you don't enter off the one minute, maybe you just trade the one hour, right? There's nothing wrong with that. I know traders who who trade the higher time frames, they swing trade, whatever, and they're very profitable. Um, 
you can modify all of this like I showed you at the start of the video by clicking on the, uh, the little blue arrow and then the three dots for each of the different templates. So I could change this to you know one hour if I wanted to and just get rid of 15 minute, uh, four hour, whatever. Maybe you just do the, the one hour and the four hour, right? And you don't do any together. But for me, the way that I trade, uh, and the most most of the people in Phantom, we all use essentially the same time frames: four hour, fifteen, one hour, uh, one minute, or LTF, right? Uh, daily and weekly, right? So I'm gonna just take pictures of all those things. So there's my daily. Again, pressing Control Shift S to save it, the image to my clipboard, and then let's do weekly really quick. Another quick tip: you can hit Alt R, and that'll kind of reset the uh, the actual image. There we go, taking a picture of it, and then I will save that to my weekly. Now for management and exit, this is where I essentially will you know, talk about if I've taken partial TPs. Um, in this case, I took a hard TP for 10.58R. Okay, so this is just the, the generic stuff that you have in here that you're gonna put about uh, the trade and how you, you know, managed your, your actual uh, position. Um, and then for notes, this is where I'm essentially treating this almost like a written journal. I'm talking about you know my trade psychology for the entry for the day. Um, and the other thing that I like to do that is not necessary, but I, I personally like doing it is I have a written journal to go alongside with it. So I'll just date it uh, for other days and I'll write about you know what my emotions are for that particular day in that session. So I'll give you guys an example. Um, okay, confident enter trade without hesitation. Um, managed, oops, managed position, I can't spell today, um, didn't get out too early, um, pullbacks, right, it's a common thing that happens, um, and then you can just, I mean, you can repeat it, whatever you want to put, right, so, you know, this is obviously on a good on a good day, but there are days where you know maybe your confidence is shaken, or you're hesitant to enter, or maybe you're you're over trading. Right? You want to document all that stuff. Really, you want to assess yourself. It's it's very important to see you know how you're actually engaging with the market. Right. Um, so I'll give you guys an example of you know kind of a, a another thing that I like to do is I'll put a little alert symbol if I am starting to deviate from my plan at all, or if I'm starting to over trade. So if I'm chasing, like in the case of this, this these Dow Jones trades, I, I remember pretty well. I it's very rare that I'll like deviate from my plan, and I don't even think that these were. But I took a break even, and then you know I was like, yeah, I think it ended up running like five R, and then came back tap me out. I was like, you know what? I want to enter this again. I'm feeling greedy. I like I want to make something today, right? What ended up happening? I took an L, right? Now the dangerous thing about you know trading that I don't think people really realize until they been doing it for quite some time is that you can have these sort of bad habits these negative impulsive behaviors be positively rewarded so if i had one from this th there's the danger of it right like if i'm going to go and chase the market and i'm rewarded for it that reinforces bad behavior right so we we just want to be very careful of that but it's a small you know little pro tip i want to give to you guys very important that you're aware of you know what you're doing again as traders we really want to be um, I want to be patient. That's really the main goal. And, and well, the main goal is really capital preservation, right? And in order to do that, you need to be very patient, right? We don't want to be, you know, aggressively attacking the market. It's, it typically doesn't work for, I would say 90% of traders. It's very rare that you have a trader that is able to read the market in a way, uh, you know, at least early on, uh, where they're able to attack it and, you know, take five, six trades a day. It's not something we recommend doing. Now, is it, possible to trade that way well and consistently uh consistently absolutely but you know again for most people we don't want to you know tell you okay go take 10 trades a day and expect some sort of positive expectancy out of it right so that's how to use my uh trade um my trade journal the other cool thing that i have in here is as you can see there are a couple of different uh, templates i have a monthly pnl as well as a weekly pnl um kind of tally for you know, the month, the whole month and for each week. Anyways, thanks again for watching. And again, if you guys want to use this template, either join Phantom Trading, there's a link to join below, or you can click on the link to uh, access and duplicate my template here. All right, take it easy, everyone.
talk to you soon. Bye.